Hello children. Once again, let us continue with the revision of our lesson Plants Make Food in Part 3. As you know, photosynthesis is the process which is responsible for the plants to make food. And the things which are needed are chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, sunlight, water, right? And the sunlight provides the energy needed to make food and the part of the sunlight falling on the leaf is trapped by the chlorophyll. Here is the equation you can see sunlight is there and it is falling on the plant and plus carbon dioxide plus water, right? In the process of photosynthesis, you can see, so what are the products that you have to tell? So here the products are not returned, so you have to tell. Now, until now, you must be knowing what are the products that are starch or sugar, you can say, and oxygen is released. So here you can see starch and oxygen are the products which are obtained in the process of photosynthesis. Now, moving further, see. Here is a small activity which shows that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis, right? So, uh, and one small activity is there which shows that sunlight is necessary. In this, what you have to do? You have to take a small potted plant, okay? And place a potted plant in a dark place. Dash is there, there we are going to write the correct answers, right? Here the words are given. In from these words you have to select so I will just uh, mention it to you in the next slide you will be seeing the correct answers so place a potted plant in a dark place cover part of a leaf with dash so that light cannot reach it so we are going to cover the part of a leaf with black paper why so that light cannot reach it and then what you are uh, what it is uh, what is done is Place the plant in dash for few hours. Where you have to where we have to place the plant in sunlight. Yes? So see look here. So a leaf, a part of a leaf is covered. The potted plant is first kept in a dark. It is covered, the leaf is covered, and then again it is kept in the sunlight for few hours. Now, this is the second part of the activity. What is done? You have to pluck the that covered leaf right in the in which the part is covered so boil the covered leaf the covered leaf is boiled in dash then wash washed in cold water so it is covered in it is the covered leaf is boiled in alcohol yes then what is done few drops of iodine solution is added to the leaf mm. And then what is seen? Uncovered part of the leaf turns blue-black in color, right? Whereas dash part does not change. You know very well which part will not change? Uh, covered part. Covered part will not change the color. What does it prove? It proves that covered plant, a covered part of a leaf has not gone, undergone the process of photosynthesis. See here. Okay, boil the covered leaf in alcohol, then wash it with cold water, add few drops of iodine solution to leaf. Uncovered part of the leaf turns blue-black in color, whereas the covered part does not change color. See here in the picture, the cover, uncovered part is blue-black, while cover is yellow only, there is no starch. It proves that it has not undergone the process of photosynthesis and this also proves that light is needed for photosynthesis so moving further just a summary of the process of photosynthesis you have to study the picture and then you have to write the correct words in the to complete the sentence in the blanks see now here the picture sun, sun is there light is falling on the plant carbon dioxide is taken in see you can see the arrows Okay, and sugar is produced and oxygen is also released in the air. So, just a brief, photosynthesis is a process that plants use to make food. They use the dash from the sun, what? Light energy. 
Yes, so you can write here light energy from the sun along with dash in the soil. What is there in the soil? Water. And a gas called dash. Which gas? Carbon dioxide. To make what? To make sugar or starch which feeds the plant. And during this process dash is released into the air. Oxygen is released into the air. Okay, so here I will show you the slide again with the correct answers. See, okay. For practice, you can guess the answers and then again look if you have guessed them properly or not. Okay. So, moving further, see here. Now, whatever the food is produced by the plant, the plant uses that food. Okay. In and that is stored. It is in the form of the sugar or starch and it is stored in the different parts of the plant like fruits, seeds, leaves, roots or the stem and here are the pictures of different parts of a means different fruits or vegetables whatever you can say but they are again the parts of a plant only so you have to tell in this activity what type of part of a plant it is right so let us begin here you can see is the potato what it is it is actually a stem of a plant so i will write s for it Right? Yes. Another is a sweet potato. It is also a stem. I write S. Here is a flower. I write flower. F. Yes. This is a fruit. I write F R. Just to understand. Here are the leaves. These are cabbage leaves. So I write L. Then are the roots. Carrots. Carrots are actually the roots of a plant. You know, so I write R, which we eat. You understand? So all these are the different parts of a plant where the food, which is produced during photosynthesis in the form of sugar or starch, is stored. And that we make use, we eat them. Right? Or eat all these parts of a plant. See here, with the answers, you can see the slide once again. Yes? I hope you understand, <coughs> understood nicely until here, moving further, see now. Here is another uh, topic which, uh, which is about how plants and animals are dependent on each other, right? In the process of sunlight, as you know very well, oxygen is released, yes? And we use this oxygen for the process of respiration, Yes, when we breathe in, we take in oxygen. When we breathe out, we give carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is again taken up by the plants. For what? For photosynthesis. So you can say that we both, the animals and plants are both dependent on each other. So here are the few words that we have to arrange properly in this diagram. Yes, so first of all, I'll just... Uh, make the arrows so this is the sun this is the plant so there is a process of photosynthesis here yes hmm? and then here is the process of and in the process, process of photosynthesis what is released I will say oxygen is released so I will mark here oxygen right then in carbon in the process of respiration Carbon dioxide is released. So here will come carbon dioxide. Okay, plants uh, means animals and humans, they release carbon dioxide. So in the process of respiration, carbon dioxide release. That is again in the daytime taken up by the taken up by the plants for the process. Of. So this shows that plants and animals are dependent on each other. So moving further, yeah. here is one more activity is a it's a simple one this also shows that how plants and animals uh, different types of animals are depended on each other as you know some plants eat plants that they are known as herbivores some eat only animals they are carnivores while some eat both plants and animals they are omnivores they are called omnivores here we are going to mark the animals which eat plants with at which eat, uh, which eat animals with C and which eat both plants and animals with O. 
okay so here is the uh, picture of plants so you can see an uh, elephant is herbivores at again here also deer is a uh, herbivore here are the here is a goat and insect they are all herbivore animals right in the second um, stage you can say here is the lion okay then here is a fox then snake okay or lion these are all is a tiger is a, they are all carnivores so i will just mark c yes so they are all carnivores you can see while some animals eat both plants and animals they are called omnivores like eagle okay here are the see frog uh, insects is eaten by frog frog is eaten by snake snake is eaten by the owl uh, by the eagle okay eagle or vulture so this is it is omni they they are all dependent on each other you can say they are dependent on the plant or they are dependent on the on the uh, this on the on the animals that eat plants so you can say that they both are dependent on each other okay so here is how the uh, nature is dependent uh, like plants and animals are dependent on each other now further again we'll review same thing what we understood until now see can you remember the ways that animals depend on the plants first which anim uh, which living things make food Gen animal or plants so plants make their food so i mark plant another which living things do not make food animals do not make food animals either eat dash or they eat plant animals that do eat plants so animals either eat plants p l a n g s plants or they eat animals that they do eat again plants if they do not directly eat plants they eat the animals that eat the plants okay you can say carnivores p l a n g s e r so yes so without plants animals would not have any food it's difficult to write here but i hope you understood simple one and so without plants animals would not have any food and would die moving further see here again filling the words in the following sentences okay so as we are dependent on each other in nature balance is maintained between the number of plants and animals right so the first word is the balance because of this balance plants get enough carbon dioxide to make food and on the other hand animals get food and oxygen from the plants so you can understand the balance is maintained okay and if this balance is disturbed here the balance in nature will be disturbed d i s t u r b d disturb is the word which will come here if the number of plants on animals increases or decreases greatly you understand so the number of plants and animals should be as many animals should be there as many plants are there okay so we should protect in the last one we should protect nature to make sure that the balance is not disturbed yes in the next slide i will be giving you the answers which should come here you can see here so in nature a balance is maintained between the number of plants and animals because the, there is a balance plants get enough carbon dioxide to make food and animals get food and oxygen from plants the balance in nature will be disturbed if the number of plants or animals increase or decrease greatly and we should protect nature to make sure that the balance is not disturbed this is how the whole nature is the is uh, maintaining the balance right and it becomes our duty to protect the nature so i hope you have understood the lesson correctly nicely and you can go through the revision once again to understand it in a better way until then take care i'll stop my class here today thank you